Welcome to Snowflake's Data Superheroes Origins. I'm your host, Kent Graziano, and this is my Data Dojo. On today's show, I have my good friend from across the pond in the UK, Snowflake superhero, Guy Adams. So this is our first episode. It's great that we're able to just get at it and get with one of our main superheroes that I know. I think you were on the leaderboard for quite a while there with a very high number of points. So Guy, to get us started, can you give us just a little introduction? You know, who you work for, what your job title is, and where you are actually located. So uh, I'm Chief Te Technical Officer at Datalytics. Uh, we're a um, big data analytics company based in and around London in the UK, but we, we work with customers all over the world. Uh, we're one of the leading Snowflake partners in Europe and also the creators of True Data Ops for Snowflake. I mean, I'd, I'd like to say that my career was a set of carefully planned uh, milestones, but actually, like many of us, it was a set of um, accidents and, and uh, fortuitous circumstances and a little bit of luck. Um, I started out as a software guy in a small company, um, got bought by a large satellite communications company in the US, spent 10 years there as a VP of engineering working on management systems and uh, network management infrastructure. And it was at the tail end of that that I really started getting into data. Um, we, we were generating enormous amounts of data off these satellite networks, and we really didn't have any of the tooling or infrastructure to, to deal with it. Wow. So kind of early IoT stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, satellite networks generate just an enormous amount of telemetry data, IoT data. And you know, back at the time, we were sort of one step off using RRD files to try and manage that. So we were, we were ready for a move as an industry into the data space. And, and I, was at the, I was at the vanguard of that. So tell me, Guy, what is the day in the life of a data superhero look like for you? Uh, I, I'm not sure I'm the best person to either. I really feel much like a, a superhero. Um, Capes don't really suit me, and my underwear looks terrible on the outside. But um, I don't. I don't. Other than starting earlier than finishing later than most people, I don't think it's really any different. Um, I guess one of the challenges is when you when you know a lot about a particular area, um, you've you've got to strike the balance between using that knowledge and sharing that knowledge. Um, you know, it's very easy in a particular day so I can use my knowledge to achieve something, but then tomorrow there's still only me that has that knowledge. If you spend a little bit of time of your day to share that, then you might get a little bit less done today, but tomorrow there's two people with that knowledge. So I think it's, it's hard for anyone to really call themselves a superhero in any domain unless they've spent a little bit of time sharing that. Um, and you know, if you look back, it's, you know, time spent sharing that knowledge is never time you regret. Sure enough. So when did you develop this passion for data? I think you sort of alluded to it a little bit there when you were talking about your history. Actually, I mean, I guess maybe most people can't point to a very specific moment. I can. Um, I was working on a, you know, on a project with a large customer of ours, and they'd had a network outage and some equipment had, had failed, and we got it back up and running. But when we did a post-mortem, it turned out that there was absolutely mountains of data hours and hours and hours prior to this piece of equipment failing. And the data was screaming at the, at the you know, data was screaming, there's going to be a problem, there's going to be a problem, there's going to be a problem. But none of us had the tools or the capabilities to do anything with that. It was being streamed onto files on the server. No one was looking at it. No one had any ability to, to, to make any sense or derive anything from it. It was that point I realized, you know, we don't, have a, we don't have a data collection problem. We have plenty of data. What we have is a doing something sensible with that data and getting insights out of it quickly problem. And that was really what switched me from seeing data as, frankly, up to that point in, in the whole industry, data had been a bit of a burden. It was something we, we had to collect. It was expensive to store. But since we never really did anything with it, um, it was always seen as a bit of an overhead. At that point, you know, I suddenly realized that this is something we need to be doing something with. We need to be generating value from this. It's not just an arcane, um, not just an arcane point, but we can actually materially improve how these networks operate and how much time they're available for if we do something proper with this data. I see. So what does it mean being a data superhero? What does it really mean to you? Um, I mean I've talked a lot about sharing knowledge. Um, I think you know, the data world's moving incredibly quickly, um, far quicker than any other industry I've worked in. Um, and it's very, very hard, even for someone who's in the industry and following it closely every single day, it's very hard to keep up with what's happening and what's changing. Um, so I think a big part of it is for those of us that have, I guess, the privilege of being very, very close to it and being at the cutting edge, 
then kind of dig turning that into a digestible form for other people. You know, there are a lot of people involved in the data world, but can't spend all day every day looking at it. Um, being the filter of all of the cool, amazing stuff that's going on and turning that into something that people who aren't close to it and people who have a more business um, focus can digest and understand. I'm going to put you on the spot now with you know, just a little bit and say, what's your all time favorite snowflake feature so far, of course? <laughs> well, so you, so you know my background, so you know I've, I've got to say zero copy clone. Um, you know, without it, the whole the whole discipline of data ops is is almost impossible. You know, the the ability to create what amounts to a feature branch of your data at the same time as you create a branch of your configuration and code um, is, is just absolutely core to the data ops principles. Um, and it's kind of, I mean, I've been in the Snowflake world now for so long. It's it's kind of easy to forget how amazing these features are and forget how overwhelmed we were when we first saw them. But one of the advantages of working with you know, customers and bringing new people into this into the snowflake ecosystem is you get to see that realization you get to see that light bulb happening you know on a weekly basis um i was working with a customer probably five six months ago and i was doing my standard discussion we were talking about the datrots for, for principles and i was saying well you know in datrots for snowflake when we when we create a branch here we create this this almost zero cost zero copy clone of the database and that gives a an engineer a complete sandbox to do all of their work in but stakeholders can still see it and the, you know, there was probably 20 people from the customer in the room and the principal architect sort of held his hand up. I'd known him for a, for a long time. He held his hand up to stop me and he stood up and said, you know, turned to his colleagues and said, I want to make sure everybody appreciates just how incredible that is. You know, and that's kind of that, hearing that occasionally just kind of brings it back to you. You know, we take these things for granted. We've been working for so long, but these really are incredible things. I think the other, the other one I would mention, I know you, you gave me one, but I think the one feature that's maybe got the most left to give um, from from my perspective, is data sharing. Um, you know, my background is time series data. You know, massive quantities of time series data, terabytes and, and, and petabytes worth of data. And everybody is trying to make more use of data within their organizations, outside their organizations. And the, the traditional world is saying, "Well, I've got some data, so I'll share it with an API." It doesn't work at gigabyte scale. It certainly doesn't work at terabyte scale, and it's not even conceivable at petabyte scale. You know, there was a there was a, I don't know if you saw it. It was a story in the news this week about. Um, 16,000 COVID-19 cases were gone unreported because someone uploaded an Excel spreadsheet and ran out of rows, you know, until we get see to that. <laughs> until we get to the point where people realize that, you know, what we should be doing is storing data at once and only once and spending all of our time making sure, you know, controlling who has access to it, securing it, driving value from it, you know, that's, we're only really scratching the surface. And I think data sharing is the underpinning technology has really got a lot to, to, to still show what it can do. Exactly. So which community co contribution are you most proud of from what you've done so far? I mean, you've accumulated a massive amount of points in our community. So you've been doing all sorts of things. What's the one that makes you the most proud? You know, p pioneering with people like yourself, the, the Daytrops principles and founding truedaytrops.org and that philosophy um, is something I'm really proud of. You know, that's, that's brought... That's brought 25 years worth of knowledge across a range of different um, industries and specializations and kind of crystallize it into what it means for, for data. Um, and then taking that and building data ops for Snowflake as a materialization of that has, has obviously got a, a you know, is, is a big thing. Um, but, you know, just taking, taking all of the Snowflake principles and all the Snowflake capabilities and bringing them to bear for, for business challenges. I think that's, that's probably what I get most satisfaction out of. What advice would you give to an aspiring data superhero? Well, actually, the, the first one is to get started. I've got a lot of people in, in my team who are, who are going through the superhero process. And the biggest thing I hear from them is, you know, effectively some, some variant of I'm not worthy. You know, why do people want to hear what I've got to say? You know, it doesn't take a keynote presentation at some big conference to be worthy of, you know, of, of contributing to the community. You know, you do something at work. You realize something that you didn't know previously. Don't think, well, everyone else must know that I'm the one out. Think, actually, if I didn't know it, probably a good bunch of, a bunch of other people didn't know it. I'm going to share it. You know, have a bit of confidence in, in what you've learned. Um, I think the other thing would be, you know, don't follow conventional wisdom. At the end of the day, if you know, Thierry and Benoit have followed conventional wisdom, there wouldn't be a snowflake today. You know, it took, the, took someone to stand up and say, you know what, I think we can do this a different way. I wonder what if I do this. And you know what, sometimes that doesn't come to anything. But, you know, occasionally that I wonder what if turns into the next big thing. So have the confidence to just experiment a little bit, try things out, and you never know what you're going to come up with. My martial arts master used to say, you don't have to be a black belt to teach. If 
because even a green belt knows more than a white belt. So who do you follow in the data community for inspiration? It's hard for me to answer without sounding a bit sycophantic because I follow you because you follow a lot of other people and you kind of point me on to the other people that I should be following. So you, you are my kind of news aggregator for what's going on in the data world. Well, thanks for that, Guy. Of course, I would re <laughs> recommend our audience start following you, too. Okay, so what's next for you in the data superhero journey? Do you have any events planned, like podcasts, webinars, things of that nature that our audience should be looking out for? I mean, right now, at the moment, I'm, I'm working on a lot of papers and, and blog posts. Uh, with my team, we're working on a, a lot of new DataOps design patterns for the automation of um, all this is the object life cycle of all objects in Snowflake, not just the, the databases and schemas and tables, but, but everything, users and roles and stages and pipes and things like that. So, um, and what we're trying to do is get that working in a fully declarative way, which is, you know, it's a tricky problem. It's been taking a long time to get our head around. We've been working on it for a fair bit. Uh, we've, we've, we've cracked that now, we think. We've, we've broken the back of it. So we're going to be publishing a set of papers around that soon to explain, you know, what, what we've come up with and, and why we think it's good. Um, we're also doing quite a bit, and I'm, I'm working a lot at the moment on a couple of programs where we're doing a lot more auto automation orchestration across multiple Snowflake tenants. We're seeing a big push now um, where organizations are saying, well, I don't want just one Snowflake tenant. I want to take advantage of you know, data sharing and data replication. Actually, I might have two, three, four, five. We've got one organization whose final architecture may end up with 42 separate Snowflake tenants in a mesh of data sharing and data <laughs> replication and things. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on as people are working out kind of how they can use those models to you know, achieve better security, better isolation to meet their business needs, but actually still not give up any of the ability for parts of the organization to share data with other parts. As you know, um, on the Data Ops for Dummies book, um, which, you, which we're collaborating on with, a, with yes. a number of other people, um, that's a little bit delayed. I think it's about four to six weeks that's coming out, but um, we, yeah, we're, we're making sure that we've got the content of that bang on, but that's going to be, uh, you know, that's going to be a really important piece, I think, in, in, in the industry. So if you don't mind, tell us something about yourself that the audience wouldn't know and it might surprise them? Well, I guess in the, in the Snowflake vein, I'm a lot of people don't, I'm a qualified skiing instructor. Um, and to your point, it doesn't mean I'm a brilliant skier, but to your point earlier, you don't have to be a brilliant skier to necessarily teach other people. Um, I also get a lot of, I get a lot of grief from my colleagues. I'm, I'm a very proud geek. And as part of that means I instrument absolutely everything. So right now, my daughter's tree houses, my barbecue, pretty much everything in my house is streaming telemetry data and I'm dumping it into Snowflake to do you know, interesting things with. Okay, so how can our viewers continue to follow you on your journey? What's the best way for them to keep track of what Guy is up to? So I'm, I'm Guy D. Adams on LinkedIn. So e e pretty much everything I do is either on or, or linked to from my LinkedIn feed. Um, you know, I, a lot of my stuff is, um, is also goes through the Datalytic LinkedIn channel. And we're constantly driving in terms of principles and philosophy, we're constantly driving improvements on the truedataops.org uh, website. Well, Guy. I'm afraid our time's up for today. Thanks so much for being with us. I hope we can get to see each other again in real life sometime soon. Look forward to meeting for a bit. Well, that's it for our first show. Thanks to everyone for joining us today in the Snowflake Data Dojo. This is Kent Graziano, the Data Warrior, signing off for now. See you on the next episode of Data Superheroes Origins. <laughs>